I think there's some films in this top 10 that we can skip over okay. because, for instance, the first one, I had no idea it was even a time travel film. Mm. I saw it once in the 80s. I don't even think you'd be able to guess Give it. us a Tofop style um, clue then. Okay. All right. If a, if a, if a beloved Kiwi comedy duo mm-hmm. Flight of the Concords decided to change the name of them uh, into uh, Flight of the Aviator someone who could give you directions Fli- Flight of the Navigator uh, Flight of the Navigator there you go uh, do you remember that film? no remember the title so, well I re- remember the title as being um, Flight of the A- seen... Aviator but I remember the form of the title <laughs> my memory of the film is it's, so it's a little boy he he either Oh, so I get this confused with that film, Explorers. Anyway, I'll just read what the, the, the journalist is writing. Okay. This family film involves a young boy who goes missing in a Fort Lauderdale ravine, only to show up eight years, having, eight years later having not aged. There are UFOs and rubbery little creatures and whatnot, but there is a real emotional wallop to the moment when the boy realizes that the world has moved on without him, right down to a scene that plays out like a horror movie, where the boy realizes his parents have become unrecognizably ancient, even though they're probably only in their 40s, which is how I feel right now. Uh, Is that time travel? I mean, that's the most scientifically accurate time travel Mm. because he's gone out into outer space and has come back and more time has elapsed. Mm. But I would not class this as a time travel film. I'd say science, like... Out of a UFO movie, out of space movie. Mm. I mean, he has. It does involve time travel, though. Like on the definition of this list, which is means you know, is there traveling through time? There is traveling through time. Okay. Well, this next film, uh, you'll get it. It's on every list. Mm. Um, it's 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 often held up as the most accurate. Oh, I always forget the name of the Primer. Primer. Prime. No, That's yeah. right. Primer. Primer. Some uh, see Shane Karat's Primer as the gold standard mm. of what a time travel film should be. Boring. It's the sort of movie that's <laughs> just really boring. Realistic. <laughs> <laughs> unnervingly re- you say uh, unnervingly realistic. We say boring. boring. Just really uh, from boring. Down at the Hill Engineers mm. <laughs> to the unshowy nature of time travel itself, where people, in effect, just get in and out of some boxes. That's right. They walk in and out of shipping mm-hmm. containers. Almost entirely unwilling to explain itself. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that little kid at the playground yeah. today. Entirely unwilling to explain himself. For years, Primer fans have become uh, have come to rely on a series of graphs and charts to figure out what the film actually is. Mm. I mean, I think that's a bit misleading. There are charts and stuff online which show you the different timelines. Because every time you travel, you obviously start a, a, an alternate timeline. So there are multiple versions of these time travelers every time they go back mm. in time. Um, look... I have not seen Primer since in over 10 years. I, I really enjoyed it. Mm. It was one of those films like Homer Simpson watching Twin Peaks. I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, but it's brilliant. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's um, but I wonder it's it worth one up. watch. But I rewatched it and was like, yeah, I think the appeal of this movie the first time was that it's very different to anything else that you see on this topic. I'm not sure on the second watch. It, was, it wasn't like I was like, oh, yeah, I get this now. I was like, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I get this in that I'm seeing people (laughs) stepping in and out of shipping containers. (laughs) And my usual criticism Um, on this topic, which is that most realistic is a dumb idea because there is no such thing as time travel. Therefore, there cannot be a most realistic version of time travel. I mean, ironically, Flight of the Navigator Mm. is probably more realistic. That's right. He went to space. (laughs) Time passed. He came back. That that makes more sense than Primer. Time dilation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this next film is a kind of romantic comedy. Um, it was directed by Colin Trevorrow, who went on to do the Jurassic mm-hmm. Park movies or something. Um, all right, Tofop style clue. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> romantic comedy. Yeah, okay. okay. It, 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 um, So it's not if you, it's not that one I hated, like the about time or whatever. That was Richard Curtis, wasn't no, it? No, no. I hated no, no, that, that was movie. Richard Curtis. It's a it's an it's an American indie. It stars one of the Duplass brothers. I don't oh know yeah. One. Okay. A girl. I can't remember. I'm going to say Mark Duplass um, just because he's the only one whose name I can remember. Yeah, I think that one's a director. Anyway, I don't don't think he acts. Okay, so um, it's a three word title, and it is a. Sp- 
a humorous spin on what would otherwise be an assuring fr- uh, it's the, it's a inverse of a, a reassuring phrase about um before you step on a plane or a roller coaster or something oh, <laughs> but, um, but okay. that These is, are the that is that's not a great clue um <laughs> Um, uh, have a good ride. To... Have a good. Have a, have a safe trip. Have a ah ah. Safe is in there. The word safe or safety. Uh, sa- safe is it safety before something before safety? Safety before safety and no. safety. Um, well, if if safety is guaranteed in most instances, safety not guaranteed. <laughs> Safety not guaranteed. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think of a clue. No, no, no. That's that good. was awful. No, I apologize. That's, right. oh, that's okay. Uh, this. This time travel film may or may not have any actual time travel mm. in it. Okay, because the premise of this film is this girl, this reporter, sees an ad. Oh, this is the famous saying, ad based hey, on a real ad, right? Which is about based on a real yeah. ad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so there's a, there's a bit. Of, it's kind of ambiguous mm-hmm. as to whether or not this dude is actually a time traveler. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a delicate wonder of a thing. A man places an ad in a magazine, asks for a time travel mm-hmm. companion, must bring your own weapons. I've only mm-hmm. done this once before. And the respondents slowly come to realize that all is not quite as it seems. I remember saying this and being a bit mm. eh, ambivalent about it. Not, not That's my it, not memory as well. I, I remember think thinking, I remember thinking the premise was great and then being a little underwhelmed by the movie itself. Um, okay. Uh, number eight, very famous science fiction film from the sixties. From the sixties, a planet of the apes. Yeah. Correct. Will, if you haven't seen Planet of the Apes... Go and see a mo- new movie called list. 65, starring Adam Driver, <laughs> which... The fact that I put it on a list of time travel mm. films is probably a heavy spoiler, and for that I'm sorry, but what a reveal. Mm. What seems at first like a silly movie about Charlton Heston being persecuted by some monkeys. <laughs> well, I don't know, apes and monkeys, they're, they're different, and I, I, I'm try to take great umbrage with that, that characterization. Mm-hmm. It quickly becomes something darker and much more sinister. That new Adam Driver movie oh. <laughs> could have probably achieved something similar if it had not blabbed out its big secret in the trailer. Well, I think that they have on purpose, you know, done that thing of going, this isn't just, you know, the reveal at the end going to be that it was Earth all along. They, they're going, it's Earth all along. It's as if Planet yeah. of the Apes well, started at the end of Planet of the Apes and the apes are dinosaurs and they haven't have. evolved. People- <laughs> People would have guessed it now. Like film yeah. criticism and like geek culture is so literate now that sometimes I won't mm. listen to the Weekly Planet if they're speculating on a film because they come up with theories and I'm like, oh yeah, that's mm. probably what it is. That's really good. Or it's better. <laughs> or it's <laughs> better sure than what it is. Right. And then when the movie actually happens, right. you're like, yeah, this isn't as good as what they speculated about on the Weekly Planet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, number seven on the list is a giant comic book movie. Um, a giant comic book movie. Um, probably the biggest comic book movie of all time. The biggest, uh, so one of the the, the Avengers. Time oh, okay, so yes. it, it, yeah, okay, so the what the are they? Is it? We've got two options. Both. Yeah, I was going to say, is it the? F- no, it's, it's one the one. first one, isn't it? Because no, the second one's time travel. The second, the second one's time travel. Yeah, what is it? Uh, What's it called? Oh, Adv- Avengers, Mate, been... um, Infinity War, Infinity thing. In, no, no, if um, we were playing Monopoly and you were thrashing me, I might stand up and yell this. Um, end game. <laughs> end game is a lot. So much that it is effectively a time travel movie bookended by two separate movies. And yes, it takes a lot of liberties with time travel from Tony Stark's, huh, I did it, inventing uh, with lazy referencing to other time travel mo- Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did it invention to the lazy referencing of other time travel movies as a shorthand for what the characters do. I think that's good. Mm-hmm. I'm all for that. Yep. Look, we're all bloody pop culture literate. If you want to give me the concept, just give me a smelly, another film. This has always been um, my, it's always been my thing with time travel films. Time travel doesn't exist. You don't need to prove that it exists. You just need to explain to me how the rules of time travel work in this universe and vaguely try to apply them to your actual film. <laughs> Uh, when they get to the time travel itself, the film na- nails it. The Battle of New York is the obvious highlight with Captain America fighting Captain America and the Hulk embarrassed by his unreconstructed former self. But the heart of the film really comes when Tony meets his father as a, as a young man uh, and lets go of the past. Yeah, 
I, I, okay, sure. <laughs> I'll take that. But right, I agree six. it was a great time travel movie. The only thing was that it ruined the Marvel franchise from then on with this fucking multiverse thing that there's yeah. now an absolute fucking mess. Um, uh, okay, number six is a uh, like a hard sci-fi, big budget, you know, mainstream movie, mm-hmm. but sort of hard sci-fi hard by sci-fi. one of your mates. Christopher Nolan, Interstellar. Yes. Interstellar is also a lot, but at the core, a simple ethical quandary, would you try and save the world from missing your children's entire mm. lives? Uh, Matthew McConaughey has to touch down on a planet during a space trip. The problem is that every hour he spends there is equal to seven years on Earth. Is the trip important enough to him miss seeing the wonder of his children grow into adults? Technically, if you want to be fussy about this, Interstellar is a time dilation movie rather than a time mm. travel movie, much like Flight of the Navigator. But it gets a pass largely because McConaughey sells the agony of the moment so beautifully. Now, he's ranked this at top six and talks about this film getting mm-hmm. a pass. Don't you think if a film is ranked in the top 10 of all time, you shouldn't be admitting films that get a pass? I oh, mean, I just think when you're doing time travel, like you've either got to be completely and utterly anal about what the rules of your time travel list are or that you've got to allow anything mm-hmm. that, you know, that counts as time travel. And I think this counts yeah. enough as time travel. I'm happy with that on the list. A hundred percent. I know. I think it's definitely a time travel yeah. film. Um, and this is one of those ones like primer where mm-hmm. if you watch any of the kind of making of and stuff, it's like, we got Harvard professor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And to explain what a wormhole is and all that kind of shit. Um, to to Matthew film, McConaughey. Though. And then we got him <laughs> to explain it again. And then they drank some bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> and played the bongos, smoked some weed, played the bongos, and he was in. That's how he signed it. Uh, if this film um, will, if, the, if Interstellar uh, uh, went to great lengths to explain the rules on a scientific basis, uh-huh. this next film is just kind of like, ah, fuck, time travel exists, and let's have some, have some fun with it. It's a comedy. Um, we did Hot Tub Time Machine last, uh, back to the back hot tub. to the future. Is it Back to the Future? No, 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 no. Number five. Um, it's a, it's, this is Back to the Future. I'd say it'd be like an adventure comedy. This is out now. Okay, comedy, comedy. comedy. And one of your favorites. I know you have a very, fun, oh. you're very fond of. This uh, did, but did you one. say it's a, for, it's a trilogy? So it's not Groundhog Day, um, uh, which I don't think is a time travel movie anyway. Um, but we have talked about this film and its star at great length. Okay. One of its stars. One of its stars. There's a time t- There's two stars. It's a in comedy this film. and it and a legendary comedian in the first two. And then in the third one not a legendary comedian? Um yes. Okay. That's correct. All right. Um the the third one came out after quite a large gap between the first uh, between the second film. Second and right. third is about 20 years. Okay. Um. Oh, Bill and Ted's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Film? Bill and Ted's. It is one of your favorite movies. Isn't yeah, it? Uh, but weirdly, up? I just wasn't thinking of it as being a comedy. Like you know, I mean, I know it's a comedy, <laughs> but I it, it, I think Bill and Ted's always kind of plays more to me than just like it, I don't think I think of Bill and Ted's a bit the same as I think of Back to the Future in that I both think that they're they're, they're okay. both kind of a comedy yeah, adventure. comedy adventure. Yeah, that, I, I'd, I'd accept yeah. that. Okay. There are times when Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure feels like it was written by a toddler off his face on pop. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Ed Solomon, who follows me on yeah. Twitter. Maybe listens to the podcast. <laughs> but that's a deliberate ploy. A way to camouflage all the careful rigor that underpins the script. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me rest put it out of the fire there. The lead characters are initially reluctant to embark on their time travel adventure until they're visited by versions of themselves from the near future who compel them to do it. A beautiful and hilarious example of predestination in action. Extra points are awarded thanks to the film's total lack of interest in consequences. Swiping Abraham Lincoln and Napoleon from their respective eras has no bearing on world history whatsoever, which is probably quite lucky. Yeah, I uh, never really thought about that. The fact that they pull these people from history and then what happens? Like, uh, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation never happens. (laughs) Because (laughs) Bill and Ted, I mean, that is a dark unintended consequence of pulling Abraham Lincoln out is, uh, or that they grab him from the theater though, don't yeah. they? So, so it's all about to be over. So he's already Regardless, it's over. Yeah. It's, it's about to be over. <laughs> I mean, all, yeah. I mean, and like maybe, yeah, the idea would be that, that they, 
if he just disappears in that moment, they just have to find another guy with a beard and shoot him and say the president got shot at the theatre. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying the whole yeah, Abraham yeah, Lincoln right. thing was an absolute cover-up because he clearly time-travelled, but, you know, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Russell Brand style, just to get some more clicks on our podcast. Just asking questions. Just asking questions, man. Um, all right. Uh, number four on this list is a controversial top five entry, okay. I would argue. More recent time travel mm. film in the sense it was made in the last 10 years. Okay. Um, action sci-fi. Uh-huh. Kind of action sci-fi with a hint of kind of the paranormal in it. A weird, it feels very out of place. There's kind of like telekinesis involved. Mm. Um, I know Meso, the Weekly Planet's Meso, hates this film passionately. Okay. So um, it was quite well received by others. Modern. Um, directed by a director who's gone on to do very big films, including a Star Wars movie. Modern sci-fi. Um, mm. And it's, it, it, this, is mm. in, this is entirely centred around the concept of time travel. So it's not like tangentially linked. Okay. Like the whole premise is about time travel. Time travel. travel. Involving hitmen. Um, no, tell me. What is it? Um. It rhymes with Oh, uh, Looper. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was I was overthinking it. That I was I was thinking more modern. Because Looper to me feels like it yeah. came out fifteen years ago. Two thousand and twelve uh, it came okay. out. Uh, which is I think it's ranked very, very high. You know what's amazing too is I can tell you right now, Groundhog Day did not make the mm. top twenty in this well, uh, journal. Maybe not a maybe not a time travel. And Looper got to well, Looper got to number mm. four, though. Like, I don't know. Hot Tub Time Machine got to 11 or yeah. 12. <laughs> okay. The one problem, Will, with time travel movies is that the rules always need to be explained mm-hmm. up front to Will. That's the only way he can enjoy movies, apparently. Oh, wow. I don't think that is the one specific. problem. I think that's yeah. the actual thing that the problem is when they don't do that. You've just got to make the rules very yeah. clear to understand. In lesser hands, this can lead to all manner of clunky, mm. stilted exposition. But when Ryan Johnson dabbled in the genre with Looper... He gave us a masterclass in show, don't tell. The sequence where poor Paul Dano's character is tortured at two different points in time simultaneously with the older version following instructions uh, carved into the younger version's arm is arguably one of the most inventive uses of time travel in the entire history of cinema. All that plus Bruce Willis's last truly great performance. Yeah, I think that could be true about old Bruno. Um, I would argue that Bill and Ted's time travel scene in Excellent Adventure where they have to free everyone from prison, but they don't know how to do it. And then they're like, well, let's just remember remember to come back in time and leave keys for us. Mm. Is a more inventive use of time travel because <laughs> it doesn't involve any visual effects. Um, okay, number three. Now, I can tell you now that in this top three, two, definitely, two of these films are like probably I, I'd say, you know, I, I'm comfortable with them in the top mm. three. One of them is completely out of the okay. field. It's a fantastic movie. Um, but we'll start with number three. They've given us two films, the original film and its sequel. And I would say again, time travel is not the central premise of the film. It's more of an action movie with time travel elements. Hmm. Again, a legendary director. And it's the first and the second. Yes. I mean, all of the Terminator the and Terminator premise. 2. Correct. Judgment Day. Colin Judgment Day. The lure of the first... <laughs> the lure of the first two Terminator movies were killer robots uh, running around, murdering everyone, is cool. But they were very smartly built around a framework of pure time travel. We only see the future in brief flashes, but what's important is the present. It is very, very important that Kyle Reese, a guy from the future, has sex with Sarah Connor, <laughs> a woman from the present. Because only that will save humanity as we know it. It's a hell of a pickup line. But also, the device elevates what could be a simple shunky B movie into the realm of the classics. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we've, I think the premise is great. It's the execution, which is fantastic. I did see an interview with um, James Cameron where he said the original premise of the, uh, or the way the character of the Terminator was written is he was meant to be an infiltration mm. unit. Like he, I think Lance Henriksen was originally meant to play him because the idea being you drop him into contemporary society and he's indistinguishable from everyone else. Unlike a six foot four Austrian bodybuilder. But then when Arnie came in, he just kind of fell in love with him. Um, That's charisma, right? When you can get a director who seems to be single minded as James Cameron to completely rewrite 
the kind of antagonist of, a, of these films. Yeah, I only had two things that I was going to do. The Terminator was going to be an infiltration unit, and also the entire thing was going to be underwater. Did I mention I love <laughs> things that are underwater? <laughs> Being underwater. <laughs> All right. Number two on this list is the controversial entry, as far as I'm concerned. It is an out-and-out mm. comedy, a largely unappreciated film when it was released, but has since gathered cult status and has been praised as uh, as being very um, uh, precognizant. Is that the word? It, it predicted the future much earlier than it happened. So he be like, it's like going to be out and out comedy. You'd, you'd say it was so, a, 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 like a, a, a yeah. far slash social satire. I want to say like idiocracy, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, Why not? What's, is that a time travel movie? It is idiocracy, and it is the time travel film. Well, in the same way that it's time dilation, right. he gets frozen for three thousand yes, years. Okay. He wakes yes. up three thousand years in the future. I guess. I guess. Uh, yes. Idiocracy. By the rules of this list, that is that is fine. I guess. Uh, the smartest time travel movies use the device as a mirror, telling us more about the times we live in now than the times the characters visit. Oh, I like mm. that. That's good. <laughs> Enter Idiocracy, Mike Judge's stinging satire about modern times. An average person is cryogenically frozen and wakes up in the future, shocked to discover that the global IQ has fallen off a cliff in the intervening years. Surrounded by aggressive stupidity, he single-handedly saves the US from famine by suggesting that they use water and not an electrolyte drink, Brondo, <laughs> to grow crops. We are conservatively 15 years from this happening in real life. Oh, I think we're already there. Like, President Camacho was Trump. Like a hundred percent, ex porn star, professional wrestler turned president, and the fact that it feels like we've learnt nothing from that, like you know, both the movie and the Trump presidency, like that people are going, you know what, maybe it'll taste better the second time give around. Let's give him another shot. <laughs> yeah, it does imply that 15, 15 years might be a very generous timeline. It's funny too with like Mike Judge movies, like obviously his TV shows are mm. successful. But, you know, you think about like Office Space and Idiocracy, he makes these really kind of searing satires that people seem to, like, you can only love them after the fact. It's like, I guess because they're not sexy enough in their initial kind of release. There's no big stars or, you know, huge concept. They're kind of, you know, lower budget. I mean, sort of Silicon Valley, companies. that's my judge too, isn't it? it and it, yeah. it was more, yeah. you know, I mean, a little bit more critically, you know, received at the time. Christ. And a little bit yes. more of our. That's what times. I mean, though. TV, TV. Yeah. Like Be Be Beavis and Butthead, Silicon Valley. But when he tries to do films, the, the formula seems to be, you know, ironic we're talking about time travel. It's a time capsule film. Mm. Like he makes the film, buries it, and then in 10 years later, we dig it up and like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. What, a, what an amazing film. Um, okay. Number one should be easy to guess. Um, Back to the we haven't said back to the future yet. Is it back to the future? We haven't said back to the future, and there's a reason why. And he actually lumps in back to the future one and two. The only conceivable first choice, I'd agree with that. The first two back to the future films, and the third, which is basically a western and far less imaginative, have come to define time travel as a genre. They deliver a complex set of hard sci fi rules about what can and cannot happen during time travel, and miraculously manage to do it in a way that kids can understand. Good music, cool clothes, a million catchphrases. And in the case of the second film, an unnervingly prescient prediction of how Donald Trump would turn out. Just perfect. Yeah, of course. When Biff mm. uh, Biff steals the, the almanac. I think that is, I think it is arguably the best time travel film of all time. It's interesting with the first and the second one, because the first one, the premise is so simple. Go back in time, make sure yep. you don't fall in love. But then in the second one, it's like, there's multiple timelines. And if you do this, it affects this. And like they literally have a moment where Doc Brown has to wheel out a blackboard. Yeah. <laughs> and this is in like 1989 yeah. when we didn't know anything about multiverses and shit. And he's like drawing all this shit up. It's like, how did they, like, did people read the script and go, oh, yeah, that'll go. That'll float. <laughs> people will understand I mean, that 1989. But again, this is rules of the universe because they do that thing of going, there's multiple timelines and you know, your, your actions have consequences. But they don't get too bogged down in the primer of it all like the people all still gathered yeah. in the same groups and all still look like the same actors playing those people yeah. regardless of their life circumstances you know what i mean like you know like in yeah. a realistic version of that like half the cast never meet each other you know there isn't the comedic way that they can play it out that they do for the sense of the movie and i'd much rather them in movies like that be 
loyal to what is going to be best comedically than actually like try to you know kill themselves to get the time travel aspect of it right yeah it's weird that that decision in the se- sequel to have the actors play like their own relatives yeah. i never dug it and uh, it's still it's the one thing i'm like i don't know like i would have just much preferred you just cast like other yeah. actors and just don't make this so laborious and kind of technically i'm sure it's amazing but I don't know. It's just taking me out of the moment by making it so goofy. Yeah. I, I I agree with that. That's probably my major thing that I don't like about the second one. To see the full video, join our Patreon. Patreon.com slash TOEFOP.